Hey, what's up? So, yes, the Nazca lines are explained now because of Karl Monk. I mean, the angles of some of these figures um, correspond exactly to the same mathematics as, you know, the world matrix that he discovered from Stonehenge in the Pyramid of Giza. And I mean, even the Great Triangle at Nazca points to um, the Giza pyramids directly. If you just kept going in a straight line, it would go directly there. And if you went back directly on that straight line, it would go to Easter Island. So Easter Island faces uh, Nazca, faces the fucking pyramids. You know, and I'll, I'll give you, um, you know, the video time at which he discussed those things, because, you know, I don't want to take up time and discuss it here, but it's true. So, it's not an alien landing strip. I mean, UFOs can land anywhere they want. I don't think they would need some kind of special place, um, like Von Daniken says, but, you know, we don't know. And I, I always wonder, like, you know, I believe in the spirit world, and, you know, I believe psychedelics can help you tap into that, but then again, they always say time is different in the spirit world. Like, there is no time, or it just doesn't feel like real time. So how do you have discourse with people? How do you you know, learn things, how do you grow there, because they say there are huge libraries there, of knowledge, the Akashic Records, how can you grow there if there's no time? So, I, I don't know, it's just, it, it's trippy to think about. And I, I also think about, like, Maurice Cotterell's theory that, you know, we have, we're reincarnated from the same star system, like, we don't go to Arcturus or the Pleiades, like, directly after, but once we've learned everything in this star system, then we can move on or something. But what if, you know, these UFOs are really extraterrestrials that come here and just check us out? And what if they die here, like in Roswell? You know, do, does their souls go to our sun, or do they travel all the way back to their star system or whatever? You know, that's the question. Like, is it going to be reincarnated on this Earth? It's like, I always thought reincarnation was anywhere in the universe. But then Maurice Cotterell studies with Tutankhamun Paco Votan, and, um, you know... Machu Picchu, all these people are fucking the same soul, apparently. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, all this, <clears throat> all the Gematrian numbers, the Mayans, you know, like, have the same exact number system. So, if the Mayans using the Gematrian numbers, which correspond to the light frequencies, had a calendar that's supposed to contain the the patterns within those frequencies and those are supposed to end like what is the <clears throat> mind calendar really calculating like the ev evolution of light or the evolution of our world in the sun <clears throat> you know in the star systems we don't know but I think that since mind mathematics is the exact same as the light frequencies like Karl Monk found out um, then it's the evolution of light that they were calculating. And by the way, I went off on some tangent. Carl Munt, Monk had dreams uh, that he saw the pyramid builders building the pyramids. And then he was starting to question all the mathematics. Like, just like Ramanujan, they had dreams in which they were kind of hinted at to do something. So they wouldn't have found out any other way but the weird part is this is like just eighth grade mathematics if you know what to look for and that's why it's advanced he knew what to look for and so did Ramanujan um, but anyway what's really interesting is that you know of course Karl Monk discovered that Mars was there either the same time as the pyramids or before the pyramids because I mean the calculations are dead on if you, multi if you divide the volume of the Great Pyramid times its vector, times its height, times its length, you get 1.0 something something. And if you multiply that by 2 pi squared and 2 pi cubed, you get 9929 point something something. That's the exact grid longitude of the pentagram on Mars. So, I mean, he knows there's a connection here, and now we know. And what's interesting is that in The Key by Whitley Strieber, the man in The Key said, We blew up Mars a long time ago, mankind. So it could have been humans, us on Mars, and we had spacious and king here. It doesn't have to be aliens. And that's what's interesting about Carl Monk. It proves that the Nazca lines and the pyramids don't have to be extraterrestrial origin, even though it's genius or whatever. 
we still don't know how they moved it, but but the math is still very, you know, earthbound. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, Carl Monk had a dream, and the guy in the key said, we blew up Mars. So, I mean, this I'm tying these things together because they're probably true. Obviously, Mars is also um, another name for Cairo. Cairo, Egypt means Mars. And also, um, <clears throat> Mars is the planet of Ares, the god of war. So that whole archetype, from Earth's perspective, Mars is like the planet of craziness. It's because we fucked it up, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago. But, you know, life goes on.